Hey guys, Matt here. Today, I'm battling a cold. I picked up a nasty cold in the prison the other night. Uh, so I took yesterday off, but I'm, I think I'm going to survive. And if I don't, I'm going to heaven, so whatever. All right, uh, here we go. First Timothy 6.11. We, we, uh, we left off with Paul talking about these teachers that are, that are preaching that godliness is a means of gain. What an insane philosophy. What a, what, a, what a vain philosophy of man that is. What a silly philosophy. What a, what a silly teaching. You cannot possibly think that becoming a Christian is going to make your life rich. Your life is going to get harder if you're a Christian. That's just the, the biblical truth in reading the full counsel of God. It's, it's all about suffering for Christ, right? Romans 5, 3 through 5. 1 Colossians 24. 1 Peter 5, 10 through 5. Um, James 1, 1 through 8. And, and leave it looking, looking, uh, Look in 2 Timothy. From here, I, I have to go. I don't have to. I get to take the, the guys into Ephesians, so I'm not going to go into 2 Timothy, but I highly encourage you to go into 2 Timothy after this. And I mean, just look at this. is Paul's last book. And about five years after 1 Timothy, he writes 2 Timothy. And Paul dies because he's a Christian. Period. Paragraph. He doesn't, you know, he, he doesn't lack faith and he doesn't speak to his jailers in, in Jesus' name and they, they let him. No. No, Paul suffers for Christ, as you will if you become a Christian. That's the way it is. It's a good thing. And, and so, so Paul now goes into verse 11 and he says, But as for you, in other words, okay, here, here's all these false teachers teaching that godliness is a means to gain. But as for you, listen to the term he calls them. Listen to the name he calls them. Listen to the title he gives them. But as for you, O oh, man of God, O oh, man of God, Wow. Could you imagine a better title? Could that be said about you? But as for you, O oh man of God, forget the prosperity gospel. Okay, here, we, we talked about the prosperity gospel and how bad it is, how godliness is not a means of gain. But now, as for you, O oh man of God, flee these things. Right there. There it is. As for you, man of God, because you're a man of God, Timothy, here's what you're going to do. You're going to flee these things. You're not going to, you're not going to lock arms with them. No, no. You're not going to go on a mission trip with them. No, no. You're not going to do some ecumenical outreach with them. No, no. You're going to flee these things. That's what he says. And that's what, that's what God's telling us right now today. Flee these things. As for these other gospels, as for these doctrines of demons, as for these health, wealth, and prosperity messages, as for these your best life now messages, as for these messages about your self-esteem, flee these things. So simple. Not complicated. Not, not, not judgmental. Not unloving. No. This, this is love. This is what love does. Charge them to teach no other doctrine. Call them what they are, doctrines of demon. Flee these things. Pursue righteousness, he says. Godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight, Timothy. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I'm going to come back to that. I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus who, is in, his, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. We're going to talk about that. To keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will display when? At the proper time. Who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. <clears throat> All right, so, so Paul turns to Timothy now after talking about this, this doctrine of demon, which is the pursuit of riches, which is godliness as a means to gain, which is today the prosperity gospel, which he moves now and he turns to Timothy and he says, Okay, Timothy, set that aside. But as for you, O man of God, this term, O man of God, is in direct opposition with the false teacher. They are not men of God. 
They can use the name of Jesus. They can speak Christianese. They can hold prayer meetings. They can do, go on mission trips. They can do outreaches. They can do all these things. But they're not men of God. They're not. They're preaching other doctrines. They're preaching doctrines of demons. But as for you, Timothy, man of God, flee these things. There's some powerful words here. Flee, pursue, which is follow, flee, follow, fight, take hold of, charge. There's some powerful words Timothy uses, in the, or Paul uses to Timothy in this section. And it's to show that, that this, this being a man of God, as, as it says in 2 Timothy 2, a soldier of God, of God, this is not a casual thing. You must flee these things. He doesn't say, hold hands with them. He doesn't say, well, it's loving just to get along. No, he says, flee these things. Get away from them. I think of Joseph when he was being tempted by Potiphar's wife and, and she, she was trying to seduce him and, and Joseph says, how can I do this and sinning against my Lord? And he, he runs, he flees, he leaves immediately. He, he flees so fast, so fervently that he leaves his robe behind. He basically, he runs off naked and says, uh-uh, I'm not going to do it. That's, that's the, the language Paul is using here. Flee these things, Timothy. Flee them. Get out of there. Follow righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Follow these things. Flee these things and follow these things. Notice in verse uh, 11, <clears throat> godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness, they all have something in common. None of these, none of these are attributes of a human being apart from Jesus Christ. In other words, none of these we have naturally. We only have these in Christ. We only have these in Christ when Christ is working through us. Remember? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1, 24, 29. Christ in you. When Christ is in you and you're sealed by the Spirit and you are born again and you are a new creation in Christ, the old has passed away, all things are new, you will find yourself crucified with Christ. It is no longer you who lives, but Christ who lives in you. And this life you now live, you will live by faith. And this faith will lead you to pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. You will train yourself up to be godly, right? This is not a casual thing. This does not happen by accident. This does not happen casually. The man of God must train himself up. <clears throat> he must do this one day at a time, one morning at a time. He must pursue, follow righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. And he must fight the good fight. Timothy said, Paul says to Timothy, fight the good fight. Remember, remember the confession you made. Timothy, this is not a part-time job, Timothy. Fight the good fight. Remember the confession you made. Remember when the elders laid hands on you. Remember when they prophesied for you. Remember when you felt the Holy Spirit burning in you. Remember when you were commissioned to go out. It's, it, for us, it's remember when you first got born again. Remember when God first started moving. Is he still like that in your life today? That's what, that's what Paul's saying to Timothy here. Fight. Remember that confession. Don't forget who you are in Christ. Don't forget what Christ set you apart to do. Right? And, and by the way, Timothy, if, if you do forget this, if you do find yourself growing weary, just remember that I'm giving you this charge in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony, before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. What does that mean? Well, Jesus Christ made the good confession before Pontius Pilate. We see this in, I think it's John 36, uh, John 36 and 37 it is. Jesus answered, uh, I'm sorry, it's John, John 18, 36 and 37, I believe. Um, going off memory here, I, I, I wrote down the quote, but Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world, he says to Pontius. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Okay? Pilate therefore said to him, are, are you a king then? And Jesus said, you say rightly that I am a king. This is Jesus making the good confession. He's telling Pontius, I'm a king. And then he goes on to say, for this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. This is why Jesus Christ came, to bear witness to the truth, that He's a King, and to bear witness of this truth, that He is God, 
We must worship Him in spirit and truth. He's the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. That we should be born again. We must be born again. Everyone who, who is of the truth hears my voice, Jesus says. So, Jesus came to testify of the truth, and everyone who hears this truth is of Him. So, if you're hearing the truth, if you know Jesus Christ, you will hear His voice. This is the good confession He made. So, Paul's telling Timothy, don't forget this. This is why you're in this fight. This is why, this is why I want you to flee unrighteousness. I want you to flee the prosperity gospel. I want you to flee the emerging church God doctrine. That's not even gospel. I want you to flee these false teachers. But don't just do that. Follow aggressively. Follow. Train yourself up in godliness. Okay? Very aggressive terms. Flee, follow. And then when you're strong, when you're pursuing godliness, when you're trained yourself up in, in godliness, Fight the good fight, Timothy. Fight the good fight. Take charge of this. Don't forget who you are in Christ. Don't forget what you're here to do. Don't get blurred by all these other doctrines and all these other gospels. Fight the good fight. Charge them, Timothy, in the presence of all. Charge them in the presence of Jesus Christ. Charge them by the name of Jesus Christ to not teach any other doctrines. Period. Paragraph. True love, we saw chapter 1. True love comes out and says, that's wrong. Those are, those are doctrines of demons. Right? True, that's what true love does. Follow, flee, fight. That's what Paul says to Timothy. That's what he says to us today in the year 2010. Flee these other Gospels. There are no Gospels at all. Flee them. Follow. Fight the good fight. Follow Jesus Christ. Train yourself up for godliness and fight the good fight. Get in the game. What's your ministry? What, what, what are your gifts? What are you doing for Jesus Christ today? That's, that's what he's saying for us today. Flee, follow, fight. In Jesus' name, amen.